Hello, everybody, and welcome to the vloggy thing. Ooh. So, a couple days ago, I was poking around online, and I was watching a bunch of YouTube videos. What I spent about 50% of my day on YouTube. That's the advantage of working in front of a computer. You can have, you know, what you're working on in front of you, and you can have YouTube where somewhere else, either on the same monitor or on another monitor entirely, like I do. Um... So I was poking around, just looking at new stuff, and I found a thing called Cinema Sins. Uh, it's a YouTube channel where they actually go through and they list off the sins that movies make and give them a category based on how shitty they are. Yeah. Uh, so I was poking around, watching that all, all frickin' day. Um, that's a great time waster if you've never actually watched that channel before. Um... And then I was watching one. It was about the 2001 Planet of the Apes remake. Um, the You know, the really crazy one that doesn't make any goddamn sense. The one that's actually completely in ca non-canon to any of the other Planet of the Apes. Let it be Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, or any of the original series. Um, it's just it's the one that went off the wall that people just kind of go, what, what the fuck was this guy? What? <laughs> I have no idea. What the hell's up with... Abraham Lincoln. Seriously. I have no idea what the hell happened in that movie. I've watched it like a dozen times. I've actually tried to figure out what the hell's going on with it. I have no idea what the hell's going on in that movie. But uh, anyway, so one of the, the, the sins that was committed was that in, in the movie they were using the British calendar. That's actually what they said. They said British calendar. And I put that in air quotes because apparently that's not the British calendar, that's the rest of the goddamn world calendar. And I quote this, Only stupid Americans use it month, day, year. And I was, you know, thinking about it for a while. Okay, let me give you a little bit of background. So the American calendar, the, the, the way the Americans write their date out is month, day, year. Okay, and every now, most of the time, it's two-digit month, two-digit day, four-digit year. But you can be really lazy. You can have one-digit month, one-digit day, two-digit year, depending on you know what you're writing. Um, and people, you know, think it doesn't make sense. Why would you use the medium increment than the small increment than the large increment? Wouldn't it be make more sense to just you know just small, medium, large, or large, medium, small? Uh, well, that's the uh, European way, and I'm going to say European even though it's probably most of the planet way, but this small, medium, large, day, month, year is the European way they do it. And the, from what I'm understanding, the Japanese way to do it and the international ISO standard way of doing it is actually year, month, day. Now, year, month, day actually makes the most amount of sense to me. I like year month day that's the one i use when i'm creating backups of my stuff like i have a list of backups of like say my quest for creative world it's literally you know it's a bunch of folders that say uh mc my admin dash and then a whole whole crap ton of numbers because i use year you know four digit year two digit month two digit day two digit hour and two di two digit minute in, you know, that way I can have multiple backups of the day and I don't have to worry about it. And that way, all I have to do is hit sort by date, or not sort by date, uh, sort by file name, and it automatically organizes everything from the date codes. Really useful stuff, really, you know, makes sense to me. I don't understand why most people don't use it, actually. Um, but there is an exception to that, and the exception is that if I have a whole crap ton of files that I need to keep track of like that, and I've seen it before. I don't remember exactly why I did it, but I did it before, and the way that I did it is that I had a backups folder, and then underneath that I had a folder for each year. So I had a 2010, 2011, 2012 folder, that kind of thing, and then underneath that I had all of the files. Now all of those files had a date code that didn't include the year because at that point it's ancillary data. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything because the year is in the folder above it. It's already in the path, so you don't need it in the file name. And oddly enough, that's where the American filing system comes in. Why it's month, day, year. And that's from way back before computers, back when we put everything on physical paper. 
when we had to keep track of bills and receipts and payments and contracts and all kinds of everything that we had to keep track of, we kept track of them in filing cabinets, uh, basically the things that are what uh, Windows folder system is actually based on. This is where folders come from. It comes from the filing cabinets. Um, that's actually why if you go back and look at Windows 3.1 and look at the file manager, specifically called the file manager, its icon is a filing cabinet. Uh, it's spawned from the old days of when keeping track of files. And when you did that, you had a drawer or possibly an entire cabinet dedicated to a year. So you had, you know, a, okay, like 1976 drawer and then a 1977 drawer. I forgot what number I was saying. So it had a, you know, just a bunch of drawers for each year. And then inside of that had all of the files for the that year. So when you're in that drawer, you already know what year you're looking at. You already know that you're looking at 1976. So having the year at the beginning of the date doesn't isn't useful. It, it's not. It's ancillary data. It just takes up space and is kind of pointless. So they don't put it there. The first piece of information is the month because that's the first piece of useful information. If you're organizing by date, which if you're doing a file system, that's what you organize by. You organize by date. So it's the month and then it's the day because that's how you organize things. You always organize things from largest increment to smallest increment. The year is the drawer, the month, then the day. And that's, you know, it's, that's why the American system is that way. They tack on the, the year at the end because, you know, if you take the paper out, somebody else finds it and goes, okay, I got to put this back. Where does it go? Just having the month and the day is useless because you don't know what drawer to put it in, but having the year tacked on at the end, you go, oh, okay, it goes in this drawer. So they tack it on the end because it's ancillary data. It's not useful except in that situation. So that's why it's month, day, year, because of filing system. Okay. And we all know that year, month, day actually does make a hell of a lot of sense. I've already explained that. But explain to me this. Why is it that when anything comes up and you know even suggests that the American way is possibly better than the European way, somebody comes out and just starts freaking the fuck out. And I mean flipping out. Like there was, uh, there was like, you know, a hundred freaking comments about this in this, this video. And that's like all of the YouTube comments. This entire video, it's like a 20 minute long video and every single one of the comments was bitching about the calendar. Bitching because these guys said that using the British calendar is a sin when logically actually in the movie using the either international ISO standard calendar or the American calendar since it's an American movie would make sense. Um, but, you know, one person said, well, why, I mean, why would they be using the American calendar? They would use the British calendar because it's more scientific. Another person said, um, well, it's not a British calendar. It's the rest of the world calendar who actually cares about logic in their numbers. Now, I asked both of those people the obvious question. One, how the fuck is that calendar more scientific? Seriously, it's not. It, it literally goes against every other form of measurement out there. Seriously, think about it. Even if you're talking about metric, which I know I don't think in metric. I think in imperial but, you know, that's just how I grew up. But if you're thinking in metric, you don't say, you know, that the, the place is 27 meters, 37 kilometers away. No, you say 37 kilometers, 27 meters. You always go from the largest increment to smallest increment. So why the hell is it that when you're saying the date, it's the smallest increment to the largest increment? It just doesn't make any goddamn sense. It's not logical at all, and it's not scientific. Scientific would be largest to smallest. It would be year, month, day for the simple fact that it's easier to organize. So I don't understand. Nobody was able to explain to me. I asked that. I'm like, how is it more scientific? How is it more logical? 
Nobody was able to explain that. Uh, I think the closest thing, closest thing to a reasonable answer is, it is logical, just not by your logic. Now, my logic, I like to think, is pretty solid. I try to follow logic, and there is really only kind of one true logic. Um, yeah, kind of ish. Uh, it's confusing, but. Uh, you know, so if it's somebody else's logic, that means it's weird logic. It's wrong logic, isn't it? One would think. Um, out, I mean, if, if there's something else that's going on, like, okay, the American way doesn't seem logical, but it actually is once it's explained. So is there a logical reason for the European way? And that's my question, and that seems to be something that nobody can answer. But people still freak the fuck out about these kind of things, and it confuses the hell out of me. What? Well, okay, it doesn't really confuse the hell out of me. It annoys the hell out of me. But I understand why people do this. They do it because it's an us versus them kind of thing. This is why, you know, football matches are so insane. You know, this is why over in Europe you actually get riots over football matches. Because it's an us versus them, my team versus your team, that kind of thing. And if you dare say anything bad about my team, I'll kick your ass. That kind of thing. But it does seem to be that kind of thing. And and there seems to be this idea that it's the entire planet against America. The entirety of America and everybody inside of it. Because that seems to be the case. If anybody says anything might actually be better in America, there's always somebody coming out of the woodwork saying something along the lines of those stupid ass Amer. No, let me let me see if I can actually pronounce this properly. It's those stupid Americans, because they don't actually say Americans. They actually spell out Americans with the apostrophe and everything. And it's well, it's stupid. Okay, it's prejudice. It's racist. It's stupid. And there's there's a lot of a lot of stupidity out there on the internet. I mean, it's the internet. This is the culmination of the entirety of mankind. We have our amazing intelligence and we have our amazing stupidity all in one place, all within a few mouse clicks. So and then you get that all the time and it's it's why people get pissed off at the YouTube comments so damn much is because these people are very vocal. It tends to be that the stupid people are louder, okay? They, they're, they're more vocal, they say stupid things, blatantly stupid things, and they're not smart enough to realize that they're saying these blatantly stupid things. Like, here's a good example, a perfect example with the World Cup going on. Okay, I specifically said football match. Now, nowhere in the United States would anybody actually know what the hell I was talking about because it's a football game, and it's with the oblong ball. It's American football. What I was actually referencing, I was actually referencing soccer. And you might get pissed off from me actually saying soccer. It's not soccer. It's football. Well, I got bad news for you. It's actually called soccer. That's actually the specific name of the game, which actually I learned out. I learned really recently. You can look it up online too. It's 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 the information is right out there. Uh, turns out that soccer is the name given to the game by the British, uh, like, soccer association or whatever. I don't know what it was actually called. I don't remember what it was called, but SOC is the shortened name for this organization. And apparently everybody liked adding ER to things when they named things, so it was soccer. And that's where soccer came from. So us using the name soccer for the that kind of football game is actually the correct use of the word. We're actually using the word right. Uh, the trick is that with football, football is an umbrella term. It's actually referencing a bunch of different games. Um, American football, Canadian football, and Australian football, which are apparently three different things that I didn't even know existed. Uh, well, I knew American football existed, but I didn't know Canadian football or Australian football was different. I didn't know that. Uh, rugby, which I did know was different, and I happen to think is a much more tough sport than just about any of the others out there. And then soccer. So there's all of these games that are actually called football under the umbrella name football. So when we call our game football, we're doing exactly the same thing as the British are doing when they call their game football, or should I say most of the planet, because most of the planet, when they reference football, they actually refer reference the round ball you kick. 
Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just an umbrella term. Um, it's like when people say Kleenex, but what they actually mean is tissue. You know, it, it's just a generic term for what we're referencing at the time. But people freak out about it because they don't want to think that they're possibly wrong. Well, I got bad news for you. You're both wrong and you're right. Calling it football is actually the correct term, but us calling it soccer is also the correct term. And that's perfectly fine. I don't know why people freak out about these kind of things. I mean, they're also so mundane and silly. But, I mean, if you're going to freak out about something, let's actually throw some logic into it. Let's give a reason for the freak out. So, I mean, it, why is there any logic behind the date code? Um, you know, is there any logic with how we date things? I mean, I, I brought this up before. It's like, why do we use the spinning of the planet? Why don't we use the whole entire solar system going around the galaxy? I mean, hell, maybe that's what the Bible was speaking about when they said 2,000 years. Maybe they didn't mean 2,000 Earth years. Maybe they meant 2,000 galactic years. I don't know how many times the planet and the entire solar system goes around the, the center of the galaxy or, or fuck how many times the galaxy goes around the center of the universe i mean we know the universe is practically infinite it goes way the fuck farther than we can even see so why would god limit limit his numbers to our scale i mean that's a little silly isn't it um if you think god is just focused on us your god is too goddamn small i agree with that term straight up god is infinite it's he's omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. He's probably the universe. I mean, that's the logical thing to me. If God exists, he probably actually is the universe, and we just happen to live inside him, which is weird, but it actually does make sense. But eh, anyways, that's a religious debate, and I hate religion for the most part. Um, where the hell was I going? I don't know. I just ramble on sometimes. This is how I think. This is what I do. Uh, I just get a little bit bored and my mind goes somewhere else and it just I just let it go do its thing and I just tend to ramble on and go nuts about things and you know sometimes I end up at something interesting sometimes I don't but uh yeah so I haven't put up any videos recently because well I okay so Sunday um let's see it's Wednesday today so damn I'm late but uh Sunday I went with a buddy of mine. It was his birthday, so we went out and hung out for a while because we don't do that any, uh, that often anymore. We went to the Carnegie Science Center, which I thought would be far more fun than it actually was because I like science, and they have the robot stuff, and they have the space stuff, and I actually wanted to record it because they have this zero-G harness thing, and you can like do wall climbing with the zero-G harness, and I was like, well, that would be perfect for me to do. I could record that and put it up. It would fit perfectly with my space engineer's thing. Uh, well, one, the wall was way too damn small, and two, there were so many kids. I really did not expect that. I did not actually expect a the science center to be that busy, and I w didn't want to be a dick and, like, bump kids out of the way. I wanted to back off and let the kids enjoy the science because, well, that's how you get kids interested in science, and we need more people interested in science because science is freaking awesome. Uh, so I didn't want to shove them out of the way. So we got to play with the little things that nobody else wanted to play with. Um, so yeah, it, it was a little bit boring going to the science center and we kind of got bored and left early. We were going to go to the IMAX thing. I don't even remember what it was about. I think it was about sharks and crap, but, uh, we got bored and I'm like, dude, screw this. I want out and we left. Um, but I spent the whole day hanging out with him. So I didn't get to record anything that day. Um, then Monday was kind of a screw-off day for me. I do that a lot. Uh, Tuesday, yesterday, I actually tried to record uh, and failed miserably. <laughs> uh, I'm keeping an eye on my recording right now because my microphone here kept disconnecting from my computer for some reason. Every time I tried to record, it would just disconnect and I would get pissed off. Um, so I kind of stopped playing it. Um, or stop playing with it. I figured, oh, I'll play with it later. And then I got pulled into Wolfenstein The New Order, um, the, the new Wolfenstein game. And I quite like it. I'm, I'm quite enjoying the game. It's a lot longer than I expected it to be for a first-person game. Um, and there were a couple of scenes in there. It's like, oh, God damn it, why'd they do that? I mean, I know it makes sense, but 
you know, why have the sex scene? Um, it's just, uh, it, it's been, it's like been there, done that. Okay, let's move on. I know why they did it, and it does make sense for the storyline. This is exactly what would happen in that situation. But, I mean, it's like, I've been there, done that. Okay. <coughs> so, I, but I'm, like I said, I'm enjoying the hell out of that game. Um, it is really fun to play. I love the idea that um, there are two different ways you can play this game. You can either do a run and gun like the original Wolfenstein, or you can actually sneak through the levels. Which is perfect for me, because I'll start out with sneaking through the levels, and then everything will go to hell, and I'll just blow everything away. And, I mean, that's what I like doing. And it's so much fun walking around. Like, there are a couple of levels where, um, <clears throat> you know, one, one thing I re really don't understand about the game is why is every, like, level, the loadout changes? Like, what your guns you have? Um, it's like, well, I spent the entire last level loading up on all these weapons. Where the fuck did they go? You know, it's like, I, I, I end this level with dual-wheeling freaking sniper rifles. I go into the next level, I have a knife, and that's it. Now, sometimes that makes sense. Like, in the in the level where you get, you know, captured and you go to a prison camp. Yeah, you're going to start out with a shiv. And that's fine. But, like, I come... Uh, spoiler warning, in case you hadn't played this. Um, I'm not going to be heavy into the spoilers, but, I mean, it's that's how I'm describing things, so... Um, but, I mean, you go to the moon in this game, which is actually kind of cool, and they do have physics, but apparently the Nazis have artificial gravity in the 1960s. I don't know. I don't understand. But once you go outside onto the surface, it, you can jump really far. So they actually did the gravity right, just not inside for some strange reason. But, um, you know, so you're running around there. You get all, you know, all these space weapons. You get a freaking laser rifle. And then you come back to Earth, and you actually watch it throughout the entire thing. So you're running around with this laser rifle. You jump onto a shuttle. You fly back to Earth. You land on a bridge. You start up the next level in the shuttle. And you don't have your laser rifle. It's like, wait, where did my laser rifle go? It magically turned back into the sniper rifle. What the hell? <laughs> I'm like, I liked my laser rifle. It was a fun little weapon. But, uh, you know, it doesn't make much sense, but it does kind of fit with the gameplay because there are a couple levels where you'll start out where you'll just have the knife and you'll go through the entire level gathering up all these weapons and all, you know, just your slots are full. You'll have so many weapons you can dual wield everything because you, in the game, you can dual wield everything for some goddamn reason. You can dual wield double barrel shotguns. I don't know. But, uh... You know, by the time you have all these weapons, you're still crouched behind a desk with a knife, and you haven't fired a single shot because you're trying to do this all surreptitiously because you know that if you fire off a shot, about a thousand Nazis are going to come in and kick your ass because they did it like 20 times before. <laughs> and that seems to be a, a motif for that game is that uh, you fuck up. It's not very, you know, forgiving. It's a pretty intense game. And apparently, Nazis had robot dogs. I don't know, but that's why that's you know what makes it kind of cool. But I'm still playing the game about eight hours into it, and I think I'm pretty close to the end, but I'm not 100% sure. Every time I think I'm getting close to the end, I'm not actually at the end or anywhere near it, apparently. I th the first time I thought I was at the end of the game was actually about four hours in. And like I said, I'm about eight hours in now. <laughs> So I wasn't even halfway through the game, but uh, I think I'm getting pretty close to the end. Everything seems to be ramping up, and you know, it just feels like I'm sitting on either the last level or the second to last level. But uh, I'm waiting until I can shoot Robot Hitler and his robot balls. I just haven't gotten there yet. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what I've been doing. I got engrossed in that game, and all of a sudden, I look around, and it's like, wait, where did the light go? And then I look at my watch. Oh, shit, I've been playing for 12 hours. Um, I do that every now and then, but yeah, it's, it's fun stuff, fun times, and I will say to you guys, as always, keep playing the game, and have fun. Mm -hmm.